Hey, GED students. Uh, Ruth sent me these two questions in a YouTube comment here, uh, looking at solving some inequalities. And I have to say, of all the topics that I get asked to do for students, solving inequalities comes up the most. I think I must have like 30, 40 example videos now of this. Uh, students just really, really struggle with it. So let's take a look. Okay. So Example one says solve. I'm looking at the left-hand side here. And solve, just like with equations, means to work to get that letter alone. So the same principles that I use for solving equations, uh, and what I'm talking about here is like when there's an equal sign here instead of an inequality sign. So I want to solve it like the exact same way I would do if there was an equal sign there. You know, that doesn't change. But the only difference here is there's one extra thing uh, to know when you're solving inequalities. And that is, make sure this makes it in your notes if you don't know this, when you multiply or divide both sides by a negative. So you're making a change and you decide to multiply or divide this equation by a negative. There's a flip. Because that will change the signs of every term you have, it will actually change the relationship between the two sides. And so you are going to need to flip the inequality symbol. You know, just like the number 100 is really, really big, but if you multiply 100 by like negative one, now all of a sudden you have negative 100. That's not really, really big. That's really, really small. So multiplying or dividing by a negative will change a big number into a small number and a small number into a big number. And so you're going to need to flip your inequality sign. If you have like a less than sign, it'll flip to a greater than sign or et cetera. Okay, so let's take a look at example one. This is a relatively simple little inequality to solve. Well, why do I say that? Well, there's no work to do on the left-hand side. I can't do that subtraction because those are not like terms. There's no work to do on the right-hand side. It's just number 60. And, you know, my x is already here. There's just one x on one side. So all I really have to do here is work to get x alone. So let's do that. Let's start isolating x. All right, so remember when you're solving, you uh, work the order of operations backwards. So I'm going to move anything that's adding or subtracting first. I'm going to take away the subtract 40 uh, by doing the opposite. I'll add 40. And you say, can I do that? You can do whatever you want to an inequality, just like with an equation, as long as you do it to both the expressions. And let's see what my new inequality will be. So I added 40 to both sides. On the left-hand side, subtracting 40 and adding 40 are opposites, so that zeroes out. There's nothing there, but we still have that negative 5x we haven't dealt with. Okay? And I haven't done anything to change the relationship here, so my inequality symbol will be the same. Don't be the student who drops the symbol. That's a really common error. Don't you make it. Okay. And then 60 plus 40, of course, is 100. Okay. Now I'm almost done. X is almost alone. Okay, but I have to get rid of this negative 5. Now careful, another common student error here is to add 5, thinking that's the opposite here. Uh, but do you see how negative 5 is shoved up against X with nothing between them? Those two things are multiplying. The opposite of multiply is not add. The opposite of multiply is divide. I'm going to divide by exactly the number I want to get rid of. I'm going to divide by negative 5. Now, of course, you can do whatever you want to an inequality as long as you do it to both sides. And I hope you see what's going on here. Take a look at this. Remember we said the one new thing you have to learn with inequalities is this. When you multiply or divide by a negative, you just change the relationships. I just divided by negatives, which will turn a big number into a small number and a small number into a big number. And so when I look at my next line... I am not going to see a less than symbol. I am going to see a greater than symbol. So I divided by a negative. I must flip my sign. Spelling is hard, y'all. <laughs> okay. Let's see what else happens. Uh, dividing by negative 5 and multiplying by negative 5 are opposites. They'll cancel. X is alone just like I wanted. Like I said, my sign flipped because I divided both sides by a negative. And then you can do this math, 100 divided by negative 5 in your calculator, 
Do make sure you divide and not subtract. But 100 divided by negative 5 should give me negative 20. And I see that my answer is not x is less than negative 20, but x is greater than negative 20 uh, because I divided by a negative. Lovely. So why did that inequality symbol flip in this case? Because I divided, multiplied, or divided by a negative. I negated the inequality. All right. Now, that's not the only time we can see a symbol flip. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let me show you what I mean. Let's look at example two, a little more complicated. Example 2 says uh, negative 3x plus 17 is less than 2x minus 3. So again, we have a linear inequality. Um, linear meaning I don't have any exponents on my x's, anything like that. That would make things a lot more complicated. Okay. Um, so I can follow those lovely wisdom principles that I usually follow. Um, and do remember that before you start trying to get x alone, you should get the x's together. So let me just show you what I mean here. Notice that I have um, some x's on the left-hand side, and I have some x's in this expression on the right-hand side. I want those x's to get together. So as a general rule, I like to bring my letters to the uh, left when I'm solving. Um, but some students like to take it to the right. So I'm actually, it doesn't matter which way you go, okay? As long as you follow the rules, you'll get it right. But I'm actually going to take it to the right uh, just so I can show you another time when an inequality symbol flips. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to add 3x. Okay, why am I choosing to do that? Well, the opposite of subtracting 3x is adding 3x, so that'll zero out there and I won't have any x's left on the left-hand side. And you say, can I do that? Well, yeah, you can do whatever you want as long as you do it to both the expressions. So I'm going to add 3x to the expression on the right-hand side as well. And let's see what my new in inequality will be. Subtracting 3x and adding 3x are opposites. It zeroes out. So what am I left with? I'm left with 0 plus 17, or hello, just 17. Okay, and then my, I've done nothing to change my inequality symbol. I didn't multiply or divide by negative, so that will be the same. And then I see this guy. I see 2x plus 3x is 5x. And then I've done nothing to that minus 3, so it's still a minus 3. All right. And now you can see I got my x's together, so it's relatively simple to do the work now to isolate my x, get my x alone. Okay. I have two numbers hanging out with x. I have a 5 and I have a 3. Got to get rid of them both. Remember, when you're solving, you work the order of operations backwards. So I'm going to move anything adding or subtracting first. I'm going to move that subtract 3 by doing the opposite, adding 3. And you say, can I do that? Yeah, you can do whatever you want, as long as you do it to both of the expressions. All right, and let's see what our new, oops, sorry, you guys. Let's see what our new inequality will be. So on this side, 17 plus 3, of course, is 20. I've done nothing to change the inequality symbol, so there it is. I have a less than symbol. Uh, subtracting 3 and adding 3 are opposites, so they cancel, so all I have here is 5x. Okay. And now I'm almost done. x is almost alone, but I've got this 5 hanging out I've got to get rid of. So what is 5 doing right now with x? It is multiplying. So I will do the opposite. I will divide away 5. You say, can I do that? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> as long, you can sick of me yet? <laughs> you can do whatever you want as long as you do it to both of the expressions. And let's take a look at what our answer will be here. So 20 divided by 5 is 4 on that uh, left-hand side. And then I didn't multiply or divide by a negative, so my symbol is still the same. I haven't done done anything with that rule yet. But uh, multiplying and dividing by 5 cancel, so x is alone. So I have this er interesting statement. I have the statement 4 is less than x. And you might be saying, well, don't we usually have the x first? Yeah, we do. That's why I wanted to do it this way. I want you guys not to be tricked or screwed up just if the letter is on the right-hand side with an inequality. It's really easy to flip it over to the other side, but what I need you to realize is big things will stay big and small things will stay small. Take a look at what this statement says. It says 4 is less than x. That means 4 is a small number. And x is a large number, at least larger than 4. 
So if I flip them around, if I put the X here and the four there, I just now am starting with the larger number. I just put the larger number in front and then I just move the smaller number to the other side. So guess what? If you flip the sides, once again, you are gonna have to flip the sign. I'm gonna have to flip this to be a greater than symbol because now uh, I started with X. X is greater than floor, four. Okay, so now we've just learned two times when we flip an inequality symbol. One is if we multiply or divide by a negative, but one is if we flip the left and right hand side. So if you flip left and right hand side, you're gonna need to flip that inequality symbol. And I'm sorry that I wasn't neat. Let me erase this so I can finish writing this. Flip the inequality symbol. Okay, so I'm fairly certain after seeing the work that you were doing, Crystal, that this was the issue, that your inequality symbols were flipping and it was messing with you. So two times when inequality symbols can flip. The first time is if we multiply or divide by a negative, and the other time is if we decide to flip the left and right hand side. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, be sure to drop it in the comments and I will do my best to answer it.